Hi everyone, how's it going? Tim here and today I want to talk about For Honor, an upcoming game from Ubisoft about medieval uh, melee combat basically. It's kind of medieval-ish because of the fantasy theme in here and there, but you know, you get the idea. It's basically more tactical, slower paced chivalry uh, mixed with a fighting game basically. So this is the closed beta build. The beta is going uh, right now, it's going to end today by the end of the day, I believe. and. Um, the game is releasing in about two weeks, so there's not much is going to change by that time. Um, so before we jump into the things that I like and don't like about the game, let me just show you how to play. So I'm going to start a dual practice over here. And the game features three factions. That's uh, Samurai, Vikings and uh, Knights. Each faction currently has three heroes. Uh, all of them have very unique, very interesting combat styles, so none are similar. Uh, as you can see here, I've been playing a lot of this Orochi Assassin, um, who is a samurai with a katana, basically. Uh, I believe you can somehow um, zoom out. Not here, I guess. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to pick him uh, because, you know, I'm kind of familiar with his playstyle the most, and it's quite important in this game. So the way it works, and uh, by the way, let me mention it, that it is playable with both keyboard and mouse and controller, but I find it personally to be way better uh, using the controller. I do know some people who are way better at playing uh, with a keyboard and mouse. Okay, so this guy just goes aggressive right away. Uh, so the idea of the controls is very simple. You can block, you can attack, and you can counterattack, and you have stamina, of course. Uh, you can see on my character there is a right stick indicator, and I can uh, block from three directions. Stop. Uh, he's still attacking. Top. Come on, stop it. Top, left, right, right? So if I block at the correct time, this is what happens. So basically so far I blocked all of his attacks, but I can also counter attack like this. And then I can basically chop him up because he's gonna be unprotected. Um, the cool thing about the Orochi character is that he's actually really fast. And this guy with the, um, his large X doesn't really have any chance to hit me because he's just too slow unless he obviously counters me. Um, again, I heard from some people that the, um, Samurai guys or the basically samurai characters are a bit overpowered uh, because of the speed because all of them are kind of fast Right, uh, so the another interesting point about that if is that all the heroes have move sets So it's it's almost like fighting um, In this case you generally have just two attacks uh, light attack and strong attack and then you have a grab and uh, guard break so, and in addition, you have all those crazy uh, strikes. So, you, for example, as you can see here, I can do Wind Gust and Hurricane Blaze after I deflect the um, attack, right? So, those are kind of tricky to pull off, like most of them. And uh, But when you do like those ones, I think they are unblockable, unbreakable. Basically, this yellow um, icon means that, I believe. I'm not, not sure. So we can we can try to do this wind gust. So we have to deflect and then uh, press any button basically. Yeah. So let's let's give it a shot. Come on. Ow. Uh, that didn't work. Okay. I am not sure what I'm doing wrong. Okay. Let's try that again. Ow. And <laughs> I just got murdered. Um, this is a game about um, mistakes. Basically, you know the. At the moment when you do a mistake, you are basically screwed, especially from with a guy against a guy. That big ow! Come on, there we go. I don't seem to pull off the wind gas thing, but whatever. You get the idea of the combat. So basically, this is how the combat looks, and this is how the core gameplay works. It's actually really fun if you are into this kind of gameplay, right? So the game currently has three modes, one v one duels, which is very much what you saw here. You can either play against AI or you can play uh, player versus player. There is 2v2 Brawl, which is again playable against AI or players, uh, which is slightly similar. So it basically you, um, you with your friend get another two people to fight against. And the thing here is that whoever finishes his opponent off first gets to help his comrade if he's not dead yet. So it, it adds this layer of, you know, kind of pressure where you have to kill fast enough to go help your guy or kill fast enough to not get murdered by the other opponent. And then the 4v4 Dominion, which is, in my opinion, the most interesting mode. Um, so basically, the idea is that uh, you have to control points uh, or 
capture and control uh, the um, points, while two of the points are just the ones that you have to stand on. The middle point is generally the two armies attacking each other. And what you have to do is you have to kill the enemy army to help your army push. And uh, like the grunts in the army are really like squishy, so you can like kill them from one strike. But um, then the other enemies come and you get into fights and it gets crazy. And you know, this this I, I think this is one of the most fun modes actually. Uh, and there are events that are not available in this mode. Uh, in addition to uh, game modes, there is this sort of tactical war thing uh, where you can see there's the um, attack and, and defense going on. And uh, w once you finish the match, you can actually attack any of the or defend any of the territories to gain them during the next round. The rounds last for a few hours, I believe. And there are seasons, as you can see on the top right. And I'm not sure what is that because it wasn't explained. But yeah, uh, so let's get, this is like basically the core idea of it. Let's get to the um, bad points about it, let's call it this way, or disappointing points is more to say. So first of all, this game will have a single player campaign, but it will require always online connection, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Um, the Ubisoft guys was claiming that this is because the game requires online play, you know, it has other people playing this, I guess, the uh, strategic map play and all that kind of stuff and blah, blah, blah. But the problem is um, actually the only thing that, okay, there's two things that require online connection. Number one is authentication as of right now. Number two is matchmaking because the game actually doesn't have any servers. Uh, the game is peer-to-peer -peer based. So whenever you start a PvP match, you will be matched with people with lowest ping possible and one of them will host the server, maybe you. Uh, you can see that not icon I have up there and you know I, I was too lazy to set up port forwarding so it's detected that I'm behind the net. And because of that, I wasn't really able to play any PvP matches at all during the beta. First, they had issues with matchmaking, and now, you know, just because of the net, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. And uh, basically, the forcing always online just means they want to push that always online DRM crap again, as they did with, like, Assassin's Creed, where it was removed later on, by the way. So I'm expecting to see it removed at some point again, because this, <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Uh, but that's not the biggest problem I have with the game. So keep in mind, this game is a $60 full release, right? So you're going to buy it for full price. Um, but this game actually have microtransactions in it. So uh, how does it work? Well, all of the characters that you see here have customization. So when you go into the character profile, you can actually customize them. Uh, and the way it works, like there is uh, separate parts for your weapon and for your armor. All of those actually look different. Okay, I only have one helmet, so it doesn't really change much. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, those have different looks, which is kind of cool. But in addition, they have different stats. So here, this one in the right corner, you can see that it uh, allows significantly more block damage resistance, and but lessens stamina regen a bit, which is not critical. Same goes for all the other pieces. Um, the way you gain those pieces of uh, loot is either through playing games. So once you finish the game, you will scavenge the battlefield, quote unquote, and then find some gear on there, maybe a bit. Uh, and the other way to get that is by spending the uh, local currency, which I believe is called uh, metal or whatever, or steel to buy those uh, packs. So there is basic pack that just have three random pieces of gear. There is uh, armor pack that has three random pieces of armor. And then there is weapon pack that has three random pieces of weapons, obviously. And premium pack that says five random pieces of gear. So the cheapest one is 300 currency. Uh, the most expensive one is 500 currency. Uh, by the way, the same amount of money you will require to unlock a hero, but um, I'm not even sure why that required, because once you finish all the tutorials, you have enough money to buy all of them. So I'm not even not sure why the hell did they put that in there. Um, those, as I said, the gear can drastically change your performance. So this one, for example, as you can see here, I added this blade and it, it almost doubled my attack, which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Which brings me to the point that, you know, if you throw enough money at this game, you can just go out there and murder everything that moves. Uh, and I believe, wait a second, let me just quickly check. I believe that if you play 1v1, uh, you will actually, yeah, you have gear stats off and 2v2, I think as well. Yeah, so basically if it's just a duels, 
your gear will not affect anything. But if it's a Dominion, which again, in my opinion, is the, one of the most fun modes to play, your gear will decide a lot. And believe me when I say that, you know, when I get that blade that doubled my attack, I started murdering people way faster. And it, it's like, it's no effort. You just, you just, you know, deflect one time, do one attack and they're dead. And that's all it requires. And that's, you know, you had a feed cooldown reduction there. You have revenge mode attack and this is just incredible boosts and to think that you can just throw money at the game and get all of that immediately is insane this is the basically definition of pay to win in a 60 dollar game if it would be free to play i would be fine with it if it would be loot crates uh, that would work the same way that say overwatch works because there is way to customize your appearance and there's actually by the way a lot of ways so there's like some fancy things here uh, you can even customize materials your armor made from and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, if that would be only um, cosmetic, so like those outfits, yeah, I mean, those looks amazing. There's some like really cool ones. And okay, those are a bit boring because they're just like recolors. But I saw some previews of the DLC ones that you get like with the um, uh, premium purchase, like the whatever, the gold edition or whatever they call it. Um... It is kind of ridiculous that you can just throw money at it and get a better loot, you know, better stats. This is unfair advantage as is, basically. Um, there is a way to earn those money in-game, and the Ubisoft representative was claiming that this is all just a shortcut for people who have more money than time, which is kind of true, but on the other hand, if you look at the uh, money earnings, so if you play Brawl or 4v4, you will get about... Uh, so for Brawl, it takes about five minutes to finish and you get about, I don't know, seven to 10 currency, depending on your performance. And Dominion takes about 10 to 15 minutes to finish and you get about 15 to 20 currency. So it, it translates to basically just a bit more than one uh, gold or one currency per minute, which means to get one crate, you need to play 300 minutes. It is insane. In addition, you have those daily orders and uh, weekly orders that reset from time to time and net you a bit more XP and steel. Okay, it's called steel. Uh, so you can get one additional basic crate for playing daily and finishing those objectives, uh, which can be both PVE and PVP, or when I'm player versus AI and player versus player. In my case, I cannot really do player versus player because it just doesn't work because of the net and uh, this, again, all comes down to the whole thing being peer-to-peer -peer and, and all being calculated on clients. I imagine on PC there's going to be rampant with cheaters and all that kind of bollocks. I mean, they already added uh, reporting functionality in, even in the beta. But remembering the situation with uh, Rainbow Six Siege, it, it looks so painfully similar to that. Like, I don't even... <laughs> don't even get me started. The game itself, the mechanics are amazing. I mean, man, I would just buy it in a blink if it wasn't for the microtransactions and the peer-to-peer -peer bonkers with always online functionality. Like, I don't mind peer-to-peer, -peer, but don't force me to play always online. Like, it has a single player. It has like six hours of single player is what they said. Why do I have to be online for that? I just want to play single player. I just want to fight the AI. That's enough for me because I tried playing 1v1 with the toughest AI. It was hard. The AI is very, very competent, like the level three AI. So if we take, um, if we go to the how to play, you can here practice against bot of uh, three levels. Uh, for some reason, I can actually pick higher than one now, but basically I get matched a few times uh, in the dials, duels with the bots of level three and they just wreck you. You cannot even kill them. It's just dreadful. But yeah, this is so, so disappointing. I would recommend to stay away from it, at least for the time being, to see uh, how exactly it develops. If they don't really change anything, I believe this game will die out really quick because these decisions are just not, you know, they're not very good. That, let's be honest, it's just not very good. But yeah, um, this is For Honor Closed Beta. I would recommend staying away from it for the time being and just, you know, keeping your eye. I mean, I will definitely keep my eye on it. If they uh, do a 360 or 180 turn as they did with um, uh, Rainbow Six Siege and improve it over the duration of a year, that would actually be very good. And I would buy it happily. I mean, this game, you know, I, ha I had a lot of fun just the combat and fighting and all those kind of doils and, and especially Dominion, which was like really fun, just messing around and, you know, capturing the points and flanking people and everything. 
Um, but as of now, I don't really see myself spending money on that. It's just like disappointing. But yeah, for unrelated gentlemen, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.